Hey everybody, it's Tyler Weingarten and Sean McInnes, and you're joining us again for The B-List, the uh, show where we highlight games that have been overlooked or flawed or interesting games that don't get the attention that they deserve. Today, we are playing Mirror's Edge, a game that was uh, pretty polarizing when it came out in 2008. It, yeah, um, it is DICE's, what do they call it, their first person runner? First person uh, platformer, uh, occasional first person shooter when the game decides to make you angry. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we're just finishing up the tutorial, which uh, here there, it's taking me through some some combat stuff. Um, so, this is a game that it it was kind of one of the first games, I guess. Um, uh, Assassin's Creed had had come out before this. Uh, and kind of introduced parkour to uh, most uh, mainstream video game players, but this is one where uh, you did it all from the first person. That's where most of the polarization comes from, um, uh, because, well, because in the first person, it, you know, you couldn't always tell a lot of what's going on, what's going on with it, but. Um, it also gave the game this unique and really exhilarating rush uh, of playing the game that that really no other game has been able to uh, to match. Um, okay, that's enough training, ladies. Gotta get to the real thing. Drake's got a job for yourself, so check in with And me. as always, if you guys are watching this on Twitch, feel free to ask us questions in the chat, leave comments, we'll try to read the best ones. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have some fun over the next next couple hours. We're doing this for two hours? Two hours. Oh my god. Two hours of Mirror's Edge. All right. Which is... Boom! Yeah. Eat that, you jerk. I just feel bad for these guys. Just he, They just continually get their ass kicked over and over <laughs> and over well, again. Well, it's really their fault for not learning their lesson. They shouldn't shove faith. No. Although, I think my favorite one of those is the guy who just gets punched in the junk over and over again. <laughs> oh, that guy's junk has just turned to a fine powder. Yeah. It's a punch powder, or junk powder. Junk powder. Junk uh, yes. powder. So, I mean, beyond, like, just the game being a bit hard and kind of frustrating, what do you, what do you think gives people such negative or... or what, what do you think makes this game so incredibly polarizing? I think it's a game that kind of forgets its own strengths. Like, I absolutely love the just the sense of momentum and the free running and when you're leaping around. But towards the end of the game, it just throws so many enemies at you and they all have guns. And eventually you kind of reach a point where you can't just run around them. You have to pick up a gun and kill some folks. Which, to me, is just not a strength in yeah. this game. I well, felt, I, it's, it's one of those games where I just felt bad for killing people. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that the game... Yeah, I'm sure the birds are really actually, I guess you could say it either does well or poorly, depending on how you, how you look at it. Um, because the game does kind of shun the idea that you would resort to gun violence, because it does have this fairly strong martial arts bent to it where you can you can attack and disarm enemies. Yeah. Um all fills go up. Um and then you know you can through that you can disarm enemies and, and get their weapons, but that's kind of where the game really feels the jankiest because you're you know you get really slow you can't do any of the cool moves that you've been otherwise playing the, the game learning uh -huh. and you know it just the game does kind of wave its finger at the idea that, that you would resort to using guns in it but at the same time I mean playing through that game is really tough and really frustrating um, it's it's made a little bit better by the fact that um, yeah, the enemies are kind of in the same places and, and follow the same paths. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of build up this this kind of routine or this kind of repertoire of, of like where you're going to go, where the enemies are likely to be, and how you can take them out. Um, which I think really a lot of it ends up stemming from the fact that this is a game from a studio that at the time had mostly, I mean, they obviously, DICE has obviously always been known for the Battlefield series. Um, but at the time, they're also really famous for the Rally Sport Challenge series. So they certainly have a racing pedigree here. And I think, you know, this is kind of a, 
a first person game for racing fans. No, almost. it totally is, yeah. And I think that's probably why you and I are the biggest Mirror's Edge apologists in the office. Oh, I'm not an apologist for this game. Visually, it holds up really well. I well, mean, I mean, that all comes down to this game's, you know, just great art style where yeah. it doesn't rely on, you know, high-res textures to look great. I mean... Oh, you know, right in the junk! Oh, uh, you just turned that guy's junk into a fine powder. He had it coming. He was going to shoot at me. And, you know, again, I think... Get to a lot of people's uh, feelings on this game of, about it being in the third, in the first person, uh -huh. they felt like it didn't really need to be, um, and that you know the game is harder because of it. But I don't, I, I don't think that this game's sense of, of speed and momentum would have the same impact as it would if you're in the third person. Yeah, absolutely. Probably also worth mentioning, this game doesn't control like a lot of other uh, first-person games either. I mean, obviously, the, it still uses the, the, the dual-stick uh, control system of like, you know, left stick, you know, moves you and, and, and the right stick aims you, but it kind of gets different from there in that, you know, your left shoulder button is your jump, mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of any, any kind of momentum that makes you go, or any kind of movement that makes you go up. Uh, and left trigger, you know, makes you do crouching or sliding uh, movements. Uh, your right bumper makes you do kind of this 180. So you can either, if you're on the ground, you can kind of turn on a dime, or you know, if you're in the air, you kind of do this move that I've never thought was incredibly useful, where you kind of spin around in the air and land on your back. <laughs> um, never really found a good use for that move. Or you know, while you're wall running, you can also. Do a turn while you're wall running, then spring off of the uh, off the wall that you're running on. That so the 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 180 degree turn button in first person shooters. That's kind of a tangent, but I feel I always kind of felt like that was a that's always been a situation where a developer ported a game from PC to console, found themselves with an extra button, they weren't sure what to do with it, and they're like, why don't we just make a 180 button? Yeah. Okay. Well, so for some reason when this game first came out in 2008, I was mostly fixated on the story mode, never really got into doing the uh, the time trials, which is another part of this game. So yeah, here's the story mode, and we're seeing this cutscene done in this... Uh, here, okay, here's why I find this game incredibly polarizing. These cutscenes. The cutscenes are... Because the weird. game looks fantastic, and I would love to see the entire game rendered out in the, in the game engine, mm -hmm. instead of these... I think as far as animation styles go, this is my least favorite are ever. Uh, but anyways, back to the game itself. Um, so there's also these time trial modes where you... Um, yeah, you know, you're in the same environments that you are in the in the, in the single player game, uh, but there's no enemies. It's all just the environments, and then you have to go through these set courses. Uh, and you know, in a typical racing fashion, you know, you get you know three stars for a certain time, and then for a slightly longer time, you get two stars, you know, well, silver medal, like one, one star for you know a, an even longer time me. than that. It's my sister. Um, and really, it's just this super condensed. Yeah, you know, just racing against the clock, uh, and that's where I really found the the 180 useful because you know sometimes they'd have a checkpoint that then the checkpoint was the next checkpoint was behind you, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to do that quick turn was uh, was pretty handy. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I died. Oops, you died. <laughs> You can do better than that. I certainly can. Yeah. Oh, electro fences. Skyrim Gurley23 in the chat says, Greetings from Iceland. Iceland? Iceland. 
It's almost Iceland here in San Francisco. It's actually been getting near freezing at night. And it's been chilly here. Not not Iceland chilly. <laughs> and for us, that's practically post-apocalyptic. Yeah, it may as well be snowing. Which it did it did once snow here in San Francisco. God. You know he was running for mayor, right? Oh that's right. Not someone who could actually make a difference in this place. Come on. And of course, you can do these sweet combat rolls when you do, um, when you jump off of a really high ledge, you know, you, uh, will take a bit of damage, and, and more important, you'll just kind of be stunned there for a little bit, um, and that combat roll, if you time it right, um, We'll help you avoid that sort of thing. Uh, I love how Faith has perfected the art of opening a door by just ramming it with her forearm yeah. rather than actually turning a door handle. Uh, Faith, yeah, she never actually turns a door handle in this game. As far as I can recall, there might be like a scripted one or one of those. Um, but yeah, even if you... So, yeah, this game is all based on, on time and momentum. And, and, and more often than not, if you do things while you already have a, a good amount of momentum build up and you time it correctly, you'll get a nice, uh, cool animation like her just barging through the door. Um, you know, if you, if you just walk up to that door and just mash the, the attack button at your leisure, she'll just kick it open. Um, Kate? What are you doing here? I'll be the first to admit I don't... You don't I, I don't. I mean, the story is pretty inconsequential in this. I mean, obviously, a dude got shot in the head. I, it has consequences for and that he was guy. was looking at R. Yeah, on the internet. Like RP. RP. R. Nope. R. Robert Pope. Don't nope. Read the news Richard Pennywise. Nope. Was Randall. Petrovich. Yep. Randall Petrovich. Okay. That's that's the name of the antagonist in this game. Randall Petrovich. I haven't seen him for at least ten years. Anyway, he was alive when I got here. Just sitting at his desk, writing. Everything went black. When I came to, he'd been shot. But something about your sister, who is this girl that I'm talking to, uh, she gets framed for, I don't know, killing that guy? Left my radio in the car. Haven't had I know somewhere up here in this cutscene there's Come a first person hug, which is Take great for all thing. games. This isn't the time to run. I'm not like you. Running will just make me look guilty. You think this was an accident, Kate? There are no accidents. Only guilty people run. Someone wanted also, to dead fast and people. Wanted you to take the fall. And people named Lola. Please. Yes. Not contacts. There's oh man, this game with the Run Lola Run soundtrack would be pretty great. Something he wanted to tell me. I can't get involved in this, Kate. You know what I do. I just grit. Can't. Blue's incoming, Faith. You might want to be outgoing right about oh now. I'll see what I can do. If this goes down badly, find Lieutenant Miller, my superior. Take anything you find to him. I'm serious, Faith. Remember, they're not playing nice. Get out of there. Now go! Oh, that's bad. And Faith. Okay. All right. Thank Even you. on Twitch? There, first person hug. Just like we promised. Delightful. And then, don't die. Shit! Get out of that building, Faith. Move! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, RP and A, that's the name of the company. Randall Petrovich and Associates. Yeah, screw those stairs. Stairs can be helpful from time to time. There was, um, do you remember, you played the Battlefield 3 campaign, right? Yes. Do you remember there was the, uh, Paris office level, which looked almost exactly like this. It was just sort of like a Spartan white interior, interior with the occasional splashes of color. Um, only vaguely. And it just felt like Dice was griefing us. Like we know you want this game. And yeah, we know you want Mirror's Edge too. This but is here's, all you're gonna get for now. So here's a level that looks a lot like it. Yeah. I guess one of the other things that was pretty polarizing about this game is uh, whether you could handle looking at it. Yeah, because the game is entirely played from this pretty violently moving single you know, first-person perspective, um, 
which I remember when we were seeing the game in preview form is when we had to learn the difference between motion sickness and simulation sickness. Oh, what is the difference? Uh, well, motion sickness is when you're in a thing that is moving and your eyes don't perceive that movement, like you're in the, when you're in the back of a moving car. Oh, okay. Simulation sickness is when your eyes say, hey, we're moving here, but the ears don't, you know, you're... My, my gyroscopes aren't moving around. Yeah. And so that's why they, they decided to put this, like, the single HUD element in this game is this this uh, single point here. Yeah. And they found in general that when people have something to focus on, it definitely helps with that. that you know, abating that nausea. I like how it changes color too, depending so that it automatically contrasts what, with what you're looking at. Does it? Yeah. So if you put that on a blue thing, it makes it so blue. That looks pretty blue to me. I wonder if that's just a... I, maybe I'm making that up, but I thought that was the case. Try it. All I have is orange oh, things. Yeah. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe it doesn't change color. I thought it did. It may just be a trick of the, the contrast of the TV. Yeah. Um. of things that do change color. That's one of the ways. That, so the game tends to use color a lot to telegraph, you know, kind of your Points where you should be going. Yeah. And in general, and sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll even see things changing as they go through. Is that, you know, colors will actually change. To, you know, red will be kind of like the, hey, if you don't know where to go, maybe go here. And you can actually sometimes see it. It change dynamically. Yeah, you can breathe out. Damn, what a mess. All right, I do believe after having some issues earlier, our t our stream is now back up uh, and functioning. Our live stream is live again. Our live stream is live again. That's my favorite way for my so, live stream to be. So to recap everything we've said in the past twenty minutes, Mirror's Edge. Yeah, is a video game. Yep. About life. It's about running. It's about life. But it's about running without being like a freaking coward. <laughs> it's also about occasional loading screens. Yeah. Picking up squad cars, moving in on you. Wake up. We are playing this game on the on the Xbox 360. Um, primarily because. That's that's what I had in my personal library here. Uh, Consider picking this game up for one of the times when it was five dollars on the uh, the Steam sale. Uh, but I largely con contested that by thinking, you know, I have so many other Steam games that I need to play that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to say that they're better than this game because precious few things are. But those other games, I haven't played them. I have played a lot of course through to the plaza face. There's a route through the tunnel ahead. Those are police cops up there. They're shooting at me. Get some air in your lungs and run space. This is not a time where I want to be fighting police cops. Police cops shooting gun bullets. You don't want to know what's behind your face, just keep running. Just keep running your face. Should be an exit off the rail overpass in the plaza ahead. Creek's heading to the other side to get down. So by actually hearing some of this dialogue now, this is kind of remind me. So I was actually just trying that uh, that running mobile app, Zombies Run, for the first time today. Granted, I was playing it on up ahead. easy mode Take because care. I was on a bicycle. Oh, uh, that booyah! <laughs> the old kick to the junk. Don't get killed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, you found his uh, weakness, which is getting violently kicked <laughs> in the testicles. Head up onto the rail overpass. It's the only way through. So that game kind of duplicates a lot of this game's, you know, 
first person experience of like you've just got this voice in your headset going oh god you have to run faster because there's horrible things behind you on the end that game you're actually supposed to be running and not pushing the run hey, buttons let's get you out of here oh no don't go don't go down the line. go down come on faith Oh yes, the zip line. Oh, I, I love use it. it because it's red. Who's this jerk? Uh, he's orange man. You okay? Come on. And then he just waves his hand in front of me and says, "Are you all right?" You did good, Faith. No word on what's got the blue so trigger happy, but I'll keep on it. And um, don't worry about your sis, okay? We'll fix it. Merc's lair. What the oh, hell, Merc. Merc. Something's got somebody rattled, kiddo. I don't know what it is. These cutscenes always reminded me of those insurance commercials. I think that is. No. The and now the insurance is all but yeah, gone. <laughs> Poor insurance. But these cutscenes remain. Wires are fizzing about Pope's murder. Blue traffic is up. Way up. I don't know what's got into them. Must be contract renewal time. Be careful out there, Sal. So why all the heat? Our girl's been lifting evidence from a crime scene. Now every cop in the city seems to be after her. Is that the evidence you lifted? Yeah. I think it's from a diary. Rest of it was gone. All I can make out are Icarus. I car you to the high. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what that said? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, his dad made him some weight. It's a, it's a secret encrypted message. We won't know what happened because I just skipped the cut train. At what point do I get to play? Um, I guess you just have to, to ask nicely. All right. Can I play? No. I'll let you play for a while more. But I do want to play at some point. Okay. You're going to have to remind me every single one of the controls. Uh, the run button does the running. Okay. The jump button does the jumping. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm into it. Don't get shot. Sorry, did, you said do get shot? I said do not. Boom. Timing momentum. It's nice that you're running through the sewer drainage pipe without it being full of poop. <laughs> this is the tidiest sewer drain ever would, seen in a video game. Would you rather run through an oh. empty sewage drain while getting shot by snipers, or run through a sewage drain full of poop while not getting shot by snipers? Um, so the crux of this question is bullets or poop? No. No, that's not. I'm not implying that bullets are poop. I'm no, a, bullets or poop. Oh, bullets or I thought you said bullets are poop, and I was like, wow, that's that's pretty intense. But uh, yeah, that's the crux. Bullets or poop. Um, who won't kill you? No, oh, yeah, not you actively. Kidding? It could kill you. Free. Uh, use of this fine cover. Frijoyes? I don't know how to pronounce your name in the chat, but he said snipers, please. That's a bold choice. Snipers smell nicer. Unless they're hobo snipers. Yeah, they could be hobo snipers, in which case you've got the worst of both worlds. Yeah. You're getting you... shot and you have the lingering poop smell. So, put that in your fife and smoke it. You can't smoke things with a fife. <laughs> Oh, storm drains. Jay Appleseed92 says, heck no, poop all the way. At least I don't get shot. Oh, we've got an overwhelming consensus for poop in the chats. <laughs> See, poop will not actively kill you. It'll just smell bad. You can't shower off a sniper bullet. <laughs>
I feel like we're missing all that sweet physics by not playing this on PC. I mean, you see those flags up there? They could have been flapping so much more majestically if we were playing this on PC with a sweet physics compatible NVIDIA card. Are you challenging my decision to not buy this on the Steam sale? I'm just saying, those flags could have been hell of majestic. They're pretty majestic. They're I mean, pretty they're majestic. Flags. They're not bad. They're orange flags. Yeah, they're orange flags, which is pretty tight. I remember this was the... Oh, down. God. This was the level they had at uh, Leipzig 2008. I don't, I don't know why that's of any importance, but that was the first time I saw this game. I think that was one of the first times we got to play the game. Yeah. And I think that's when one of the developers told me that there's an achievement for getting through the entire game without killing anybody. And that, I think, might have adversely affected my experience with the game because I was convinced that I had to get through the game without killing anybody. Which is the way you should play this game. Yeah. And now, when you, when you originally played this game and when you've been replaying it, are you on the normal difficulty level? This is normal difficulty. Okay. Yeah. Because I found the game much more enjoyable on easy difficulty level. It just probably is. Because it's. I mean, especially if you want to avoid having to kill people like a murdering bastard. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'm i playing this game for just the fun of the free running elements, and having to worry about getting shot and killed constantly was. It wasn't why I was playing the game. Yeah. So I kind of tuned it to my preference. That's that's probably reasonable. Ren Loco eight three one asks, "Why is everything orange, red, and white?" To which I would respond, "Because it's Mirror's Edge." It's Mirror's um, Edge. That's uh, that's how this game looks. Yeah. Um, yeah. They they opted to go for this like really stark, really. Um, yeah, really dramatic looking, you know, kind of resorting largely to, to primary colors. And um, they did that in part, like we were talking about earlier, they did that in part um, to kind of highlight uh, points of interest in the game. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times the stuff you need to traverse will be in red. Like there's that little box there yeah. that was kind of like a, hey, maybe you should jump here. Actually, I... Mash that door open. Mash it again. open. <laughs> Faith never, like... Oh, it was up there. She never presses a button or, like, opens a door. She always smashes a button with her fist and blasts the door open with her elbow. That's... And that's what one of the many things I love about Faith. She just doesn't fuck around. She's yeah. hardcore. There we go. <laughs> Pesky Panda has a theory that Faith is actually the female Duke Nukem. Except she's in a good game. Yeah. And not a misogynist. And not a misogynist. Behold the door opening. But mostly that she's in a good game. Yeah. Alright. I'll let you hijack Thank these controls. Up. Okay. Although you will have to play with inverted. No. Inverted Y axis. Which is the play style of heroes. Okay. I will sneak around behind, behind you. So I can better monitor the chat. Alright, remind me of my controls. Left bumper for left, jumping up. Le left. Yeah, left bumper is, is jump. Uh, left trigger is crouch or slide. Uh -huh. um, right bumper is your, your 180. Um, all your attacks happen with the right trigger. So if I wanted to punch a rat, I would just run up and do one of these just, jobs, right? Do some rat punching? Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to punch a rat. Make that your primary task. Um, 
X does your slow mo thing that you can uh, occasionally trigger when uh, you know you want to do. Mostly that's good for like disarms, because uh, hey. otherwise the contextual thing uh, to disarm them uh, happens really fast. And there's no sprint button, right? You just build up speed? Yeah, you just keep running. Okay. All right. Haven't played this game since 2008, but it's like riding a bike. Yeah, you just, just let your hands remember. Um, doesn't punching rats bring back the whole death by disease topic? Death by disease? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that brings you closer to dying of some sort of poop disease. <laughs> no. Uh... For anybody who just tuned in and did not follow our whole poop disease conversation, uh, consider yourself lucky that you missed that entire thing. Um, I oh think, no, that poor rat! I think the oh, biggest, nards. I think the thing to avoid here is that you can just punch a rat. Just don't punch that rat in the mouth. So if you punch the rat in the mouth, you might get some weird septic disease. Rat disease? Yeah. Don't punch people in the mouth either. It's really bad for your hand. That's fair. Probably also the other oh, person's nerds. teeth. Get your All right, sniper. Come get a piece of this! Oh, no. He's, he just shot you. Oh, you like that? How do I pick this up? Uh, I don't believe you can... <gasps> oh, no! You got shot. Don't die, Faith. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I think you can only get weapons... Uh, by from, disarming? Uh, yeah, by disarming, so... That's fair. All right, here it goes. You need to disarm some people so you can show people the... Uh, the oh, nuts! The janky shooting. <laughs> I do love the janky shooting. Do you guys play Skyrim sometimes? Sean, do you still play Skyrim sometimes? Oh, God. That's a I... question I'm not going to answer. Oh, all right. What am I missing on that one? Sean is still deeply scarred from the process of producing Skyrim mods of the week. What? Well, okay, we were am actually I, just, just we were actually just uh, just trolling him last week by showing him all the uh, great mods available for Skyrim that you can use to enhance the textures of your carpets or of apples. Ah yes. Or your cows. Ah yes. These are all the mods that Sean is looking forward to highlighting in the next episode of Skyrim mods of the week. Which will happen at some point yeah. in the future. Um, what am I doing? Should I wall run? Or should no, I you can't can, really wall you run? You can that. get that. You, well, I don't know if you can now because you want to have the momentum. You can absolutely get that just from a straight jump. Okay. Uh, just jump later. See? There you go. But you definitely don't want to You want to keep the momentum of that, that swing on those, those monkey bars. I call them monkey bars. Oh, nards! <laughs> All right, I made progress though, at least. So, okay. Oh yeah, and why is your disarm? Why is my disarm? Yeah. Or just right. awkwardly grab in front of you. <laughs> oh, look at my hands! Look at my creepy man hands! <laughs> I forgot that Faith has chunky sausage fingers. Look at those fingies! <laughs> Oh my god, why are her fingers so swollen on her right hand compared to her left hand? That's the one she's been punching all the rats oh with. Oh my god. A septic rat disease. Thick man fingers. That's cool. <laughs> Whoa. Oh right, I hit the right bumper that time. That was weird. Yet again, one of the uh, many polarizing things about this game. Man hands. <laughs> Thick sausage fingers. Maybe Faith has a nice toe thumb. Also, Faith was wearing those sweet toe shoes before they became all hip. She's the originator. I guess they're kind of... Oh, she's got the... It's got the one toe. Yeah, so she's got the ninja shoes. They're yeah. kind of like climbing shoes, too, but... Yeah. A little bit better suited for running, because you cannot climb... You cannot run in climbing shoes. You just destroy your feet. All right. What's my uh, zip line button? Do I just hold it? It's just, You just use the jump, jump button. Oh, yeah. And you auto zip line. Auto zip line. <laughs> okay. Exploring this nice old sewer. Look at this. Those are some men. You think they see you? 
Hope not. All right, Faith, don't fall down. No, what did I? <laughs> you had one job. You had one job. Okay. So once again, we are, this is a streaming show in GameSpot called The B-List, which is a game where we play games that we think are great that uh, for one reason or another, you know, maybe they, it's a, a good game with some, some problems or just games that are polarized or just games that got kind of overlooked, whatever, what, for whatever reason, games that haven't got the attention that we think they deserve. Uh, today we're playing Mirror's Edge. Am I? I feel like I'm not even supposed to go this way. Um, I don't think I am. Which is no, you're you're supposed to go the other way. Well, you're supposed to go down the zip line, but then right, I did that, and then I should have gone towards that door. Oh, because there's just nothing over there. Yeah, I should look where I'm going before I go places. This is the place with all the bright lights and the bright colored door. Yeah. Go see what's behind the green door. You're inside. Get out of there, Faith. I made a pornographic reference. Look at my man hands. <laughs> You should Look at these man hands, everybody! <laughs> Did you see the part of the stream five minutes ago where we talked about Faith's man hands? Uh, yeah. Wait, what button is the pressing the thing? Uh, it's button. the A button. A button. Hit it! Alright. Okay, where am I supposed to go? Uh, you're supposed to go up to one, I think the ledge to your left. All right. And yeah, you've got to kind of shimmy your way all the way along there. I think hit the right button bumper to do the 180. Oh yeah. There we go. It's all coming back. Overlord Rouse says that Faith's hands look more girly than his or hers. And a pesky panda thinks that lightning in Final Fantasy 13 is a good example of female hands. <laughs> oh my god. They're just like, I, I mean the right index finger compared <laughs> to the left index finger. Maybe this is just an issue of like, I don't know, some weird thing going on with the angle of the camera, but her right index finger is so thick. It's so, just... so stubby. Okay, so where am I going? A little going sausage finger. She's got a little sausage finger. A wee little sausage finger. Her hands are swollen from so much rat punching and climbing. Yeah, that's probably true. All right, I'm going to do a wall run. You ready for this? I'm ready for your wall run. Here we go. And safe. Yeah. Now watch me punch this thing open. Um... Skyrim girly, yes indeed, we are playing this game on the Xbox. We are, the Xbox 360 Entertainment System. To be um, precise. I was discussing earlier how I was considering picking the game up on Steam um, during the- Oh, nope, nope. During the Steam sale, but uh, but I didn't. And even even if we were playing on the PC, um, oh, you're back in this, this room. Thing again? You gotta do this thing again. I feel like the, the checkpoints are usually so good in this game, but occasionally... This is one of the, the lesser good ones. The, the not as good checkpoint. Yeah. Okay. I'm back up this way. Now you gotta remember to make your jump at the bottom. Oh wait, no you don't. <laughs> and you're in the meat grinder. I'm in again. the meat grinder. Alright. The sewer meat grinder. With all the rats. All right, back up this way. I told uh, the general manager of Dice that I thought Mirror's Edge was the most Scandinavian game ever made, and I'm and I'm still not sure what he thought about that sentiment. Yeah, he kind of didn't really seem like he had a whole lot to say on mm -hmm. that subject other than uh, I mean that's that you know it, if you've ever been to an Ikea you know the the stark colors and, and uh, you know stark design in general is yeah. something that is definitely a part of that design culture he sort of said well I mean you know 
it's it ironically true that you know a lot of houses, or at least a lot of the houses that we have seen in Stockholm, uh, employ a lot of that design and just you know because that's what they see and experience every day. In fact, even a bit of, of the, the design of Dice's offices in Stockholm uh, have some of that design aesthetic as well. Uh, All right. And I think, you know, just in terms of color palette, I mean, I think they have a greater um, responsibility to what people want from the Battlefield franchise uh, to look more realistic in those games. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you, you still see some of the trappings of that design aesthetic. I mean, not just in the uh, the Paris office level like you, you called out, but, you know, just the design of that game in general. Uh, you've seen The Dark Knight Rises, right? I have. What does this remind you of? Oh, I made it. I finally made it. <laughs> I made the jump. You you are, um, you are, what is the name of that actor? You are Tom Hardy. I'm Tom Hardy. Climbing his way out of a hole in the ground. Oh, and also uh, Christian Bale did that too. I am Gotham's Reckoning. You merely adopted the darkness. I was born in it, <laughs> molded by it. That's my Bane impression, by the way. It's a pretty good Bane impression. I like to think so. The hills are alive! The, the sounds of reckoning! <laughs> I am Gotham's reckoning! I am in constant pain! Overlord Rouse brings up a keen point that if dogs were able to play video games, Mirror's Edge would be unplayable because dogs can't see red. Dogs can't see red? Well, you know... You say that. I don't think that's entirely true because... I don't know if that's ever been proven. Well... Or maybe it has, and I'm just being contrarian. Even... Okay, where am I... Oh, no, nuts, nuts, nuts. That's, that, uh, was the wrong, that was the wrong control. Well, in the... Uh, so one of the, you know, when you make the shift from playing the, uh, the, the single-player component of the game to doing the, uh, the time trials is that a lot of the usual visual cues to say, hey, swing on this thing or climb this thing or do your jump here, those go away. And at first that's like, oh my God, what do I do? I don't know how to play this game anymore. Um, but they take a lot of those away because they kind of end up being a crutch for like, hey, here's just a single path through it. And, and right. those obvious paths generally aren't the fast ones. Uh, so once you start looking at this game in more of like a, a blank slate, then uh, a lot more pathways seem to open up. So dogs might be better at this game than you could possibly imagine. Yeah. Although, they're gonna have a tricky time with these controls and their dog paws. Yeah, dogs, uh, I don't know if you realize this about dogs, but they don't have very good thumbs. No. Um, now, one of the thing, another thing that I find fascinating is that there was, uh, so CES was just last weekend, and um, the, uh, the popular kickstarted VR headset, the Oculus Rift. Um, the Homunculus Rift? I like to call it the homunculus room. You know, got got a, a bit of favorable press. You'll want to uh, get on that uh, set of girders. That oh! Just, now you're doomed. But <laughs> God. Now you can just stare at that going, Look at how it. am I going to get up there? Look at it. That was my salvation. They didn't have this scene in The Dark Knight Rises. The scene where Batman has to jump onto the girders <laughs> when they're flashing red next to him. All right, gonna... time for suicides. So, uh, along with uh, the coverage from CES on the Oculus Rift, uh, there were, was announced a, a list of games yeah. that are presently in work being at least partially or some of them, some of which completely supported by the uh, the headset. And one of them was this game. Yeah. Um, Although I would I would love to be able to play this game. It is the, worth noting that Dice is not doing any sort of official. Homunculus Rift support. No. It is going to be a third party endeavor. Which is fine. I mean, oh, now you get to do some combat. Ah! And this is the ones where you, you have to take these dudes out. You, you jump on his head like Mario. Or just get shot. All or right, shot let's try that again. Like Mario. How do I jump on his head? What button do I press? Why? Um. Is that an actual combat move? I thought you could 
head bop those guys. Maybe I'm wrong. Let us know in the chat if bopping those dudes is actually possible. Um, who asks? Uh, Renloco831 asks, um, <laughs> do I think... Oh, nerds! You should, you should open up with doing the, uh, the slide kick. Slide kick? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think EA would like would make a new Mirror's Edge using Frostbite Engine 2? And if so, God, so what good. would you want to see in it? Um, Mirror's Edge, that's what I want to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, if you give us more Mirror's Edge, I I would like to see more Mirror's Edge. Look, it's a Mirror's Edge logo in Mirror's Edge. Uh, that means... Yo, that dog, are, I heard you like Mirror's Edge. That means that there is a hidden package somewhere nearby, should you want to go find it when these dudes are shooting at you. Yeah. Oh! You're so bad at. Oh, oh, you like that? Are you, are Come you gonna do it? Boom! Oh, Sean is not Oops, playing this pal, game surprise. right. Surprise! Ha! He's uh, just murdering people. All right, gotta let the old health regenerate. Want a piece of this? Um, get it. So playing this game this weekend a lot just to kind of get get back into practice for this live stream. Um, Oh, come on! I wouldn't mind seeing this game employing ah, uh, some stealth mechanics to help you with combat. Yeah. Like if you could sneak up on dudes and and do. Are you are you you're doing? You no, can't tea bag that ahead. man. Go ahead and continue what you're saying. Because you don't have tea bags. What? A lady have, can still tea bag a you dude. You have lady parts. Tyler, this is the 21st century. You need to open up your mind to the possibility of ladies being able to tea bag dudes. Okay. It's the symbolism. I'm not going to get into the specifics, all right? Okay. Just use your imagination. I'm trying not to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of thought, you know, employing some stealth mechanics might be really neat in this game. Um, you know, kind of similar to, you know, still using the, the martial arts takedowns and things like that. Um, you know, maybe applying a little bit of, like, that Dishonored design aesthetic while... Um, Which way am I supposed to go here? I need to get to that red. Well, door. keeping the focus of the game on the the, the first person movement. Yeah. Um, uh, but then again, I also saw, thought about this and realized what I was basically constructing in my mind was like a 3D action game, kind of in the mold of the uh, you know the no the no kill no alert playthroughs uh, for Mark of the Ninja. Oh, yeah. And once I realized that, that was what I was talking about, I said, okay, yeah, I do want that. Oh, why am I why am I going you, in super slow motion? You hit the slow motion button. Oh, ha! Huh. Right, what's my door open button? Uh, it should be the attack button. Oh, right. I forgot. There's no button to open a door. You can only punch a door. Y yep. You can only murder a door. Which is great. I do love that. I wish these rats would stay still long enough for me to punch the shit out of them. Skyrim girly uh, insists that you, Sean, should play Kingdom Hearts. Why would I want to do that? Um. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Don't let him wind you up, okay? He used to be a pretty decent runner. God knows who he's working for now. It's called V-Bag or... To oh, no, not going to say that. <laughs> Don't say that not one. Not going to say that. Don't say that one. Oh. All right. Don't say that other one either. Have you heard about Dragonborn? I have heard about it. Any other questions? Have you played Mortal Online? Mortal Online? No. Oh, oh who's this jerk face? You can't outrun Faith. I also love that this is a joke that you're only going to get if you're from the Bay Area, but I like that the newspaper in here is called Daily City. <laughs> and the joke is that there is a there is a sort of a suburb of San Francisco. Daily even, City's its own city. Yeah, it's its own city. But it's immediately south of San Francisco. Yeah. It's and, almost indistinguishably south of San Francisco. Yeah, and it is just this kind of... It's geographically located in an area that just has thick suffocating fog about 364 days a year. Yeah. And it's just very dreary. And I like the idea that this is like a fancy futuristic version of Daily City, California. Yeah. Except that you can actually see quite a, quite a bit of distance to this game because it doesn't have that crippling fog. Yeah, which is good. Um, uh, 
I'm gonna get you. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna find you and kill you. Oh, nuts. You're also gonna hurt your ankles. What's my combat roll button? Uh, it's the, the ducking button. Oh, the duck, as soon as I hit the ground. That makes sense. Do that left trigger. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was an awkward way to land on a fence, but I'll take it. Uh, GameSpot, what do you think about the game Blur from Bizarre before they went out of business? Um, I can tell you what, I, I didn't play a ton of Blur, but I played enough to realize I didn't, I wasn't incredibly fond of it. Um, yeah. Just because the, I, I've always loved what uh, Bizarre Creations were able to do with a racing engine to put together a game that, Good thing there's an elevator right next to him. Yeah, right. Uh, put together an engine that feels about 70% of what you want. Well, maybe about, you know, about half of what you want from a, a simulation racing. I mean, they're, they're by no stretch simulation racers, but the games, the cars in those games handle in really predictable fashions. Um, but they're just arcadey enough to let you do big, stupid power slides and do all the fun stuff that would be trickier oh. to do in a simulation racer and blur was just too arcadey for me and I, I uh, and as a I've never been a fan of nuts Mario Kart style games because I feel like they they take away from um, the actual act of racing you know because you can hold down a pretty decent lead for a good part of the game and then somebody uses a weapon on you and then you lose all that momentum that you built up um, and it just, it's not, it's not what I like to see, what I, what I like to see from Bizarre Creations. I've always been a big fan of the, the PGR series and, and would have liked to, would have liked to see one of those as their, their last driving game. Sean, Te did you like Technically, Blur? technically Bloodstone had driving in it and the driving scenes were awesome. Yeah? Yeah. I, I believe that. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Blur. I felt like... It was just a little too middle of the road for me. Like, I love Mario Kart, um, so that that's a genre I can totally get into. But it was, it was just something that never really clicked with me in terms of just having those realistic cars in there. Yeah. It was like, if I'm going to be playing a kart racer, I want it to be an all-out Died in the wool kart racer. You right. Know? I don't want it to be this sort of you, like... You don't want to drive a Ford Focus in a kart racer. Right, yeah, exactly. And I feel like they had such success making Project Gotham that sort of like um, wide audience middle ground between a sim racer and an arcade racer that they tried doing that with two other types of driving games and it just didn't work that second time. Yeah. Um, but I will say this, I love Bloodstone. I think I, I reviewed that game and I gave it like a 7.5. How many of those? How many of those points were just for the driving? Uh, probably, probably about six of those points were for the driving. Oof, that doesn't but, speak well okay, for the rest no. of the game. Four of those points were for the driving. Three and a half of those points were for the uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is also a gross oversimplification of our reviews yeah. process. Please do not hold us to this <laughs> discussion. But um, did they ever put the the Bond games back on Steam after they took them down? Because Activision had like a licensing thing expire, but I don't know if it's if it's on Steam or in fact on console if you can get it cheap. Check out Bloodstone. It's uh, silly. It's short. It's it's not the best third-person shooter, but it's a fun, silly game. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, Singeth makes a keen point that Blur is a carding game with a Ford Focus. It was definitely a B-list game. Yeah, take that under advisement. If I were you, okay. What um, do you guys think of the Skate series? Oh, I fucking love the Skate series. I, as do I. Yeah. Um, yeah, those um, Yeah, those games are great. Uh, I mean, I, I love that game from the that series from the very beginning with Skate 1, even yeah. though... And, and I think that was when EA was doing this uh, really creative process of, like, just putting games out there. And they came out, and they, they were not perfect. You know, they had, they had a couple of problems. Um... But they also were loaded with so much potential, and then you know when they announced Skate Two, 
Yeah, that was a game with like pretty much all the jagged edges. The original Skate rounded off, and then yeah. um, I wasn't that much of a fan of the of the third one. Skate three was unnecessary. Yeah, that, I mean, I just I had played so much of Skate two, mm -hmm. and just be the suspects. Pretty much gotten everything out of that world and that system that I could. That that I wasn't very interested in what the new stuff that Skate three brought to the table. I know what you are. We should stream Skate two. On this show, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my captain's asking some difficult questions. Although I lost all my 360 save files, so I would have to play through that game again to to unlock stuff. That sounds like a really regrettable position to be in. <laughs> Having to play through Skate Two again. That would be too bad. Um, somebody else asked what our favorite games of 2012 were. Um, me personally, I'm gonna have to go with XCOM. XCOM is a great game. It's, it's a game that I, hasn't totally clicked with me yet. And I can't stop. Um, but my top three, I think, are Journey, Dishonored, and The Walking Dead. Although, after I published my personal top ten list on GameSpot, uh, I finally went and played Sleeping Dogs on PC, and that is a game that totally would have been in my top ten. Yeah, that game is... I've been playing that, that game as well, and that game is fantastic. Just because of how it it's trying to tell this serious story, but it's also a game that you can do lots of dumb stuff in. Yeah. And uh, um, it, and it, it lets you do this dumb stuff without feeling like you're really getting away from the story. Yeah. Um, such it, as doing. My favorite thing in that game is riding your motorcycle anywhere and everywhere. That's that's not the way you need to be going. My favorite thing in that game like, is like you can ride a motorcycle in your apartment and yeah. do burnouts on your bed. Um, my favorite thing in that game is driving a car and doing the button that lets you basically punch other cars with your car. Yes. And just knocking motorcyclists into oncoming traffic. You're a psychopathic murderer. Uh, possibly. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to jump over here. Let's do, let's do this. Oh, am I going to, oop, I thought I was going to roll off that ledge for a second. I feel like you should know, Sean, that all hail Carmack in the chat is very disappointed in your choice of Walking Dead. Whoa, what's wrong with The Walking Dead? Or sh does he think I should have placed it higher than number three? Nope, can't get up there. Where am I going? Sleeping dogs is horrible. Whoa! You I and I can't be friends, whoever said that. Okay, where am I going? I don't I'm understand going the sentiment that sleeping dogs is horrible. That game is that ridiculous game is and fun. delightful. Yeah. If you like your games to contain fun, yeah. play the sleeping dogs. You need to get up there. Yeah, well how am I gonna get up here? You need to do the, the wall run 180 spring off the wall triangle jump thing. What? What? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Come on. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Who? Here we go. Uh, Siginth, oh, no. damn it. The Twitch Android... I, yeah, Siginth, I agree. I wish the Twitch Android client had chat functionality as well. Boom. Look at that. But think of it this way. You can, uh, you can pop that, uh, you know, if you have, like, an Android tablet, you can... You can throw the uh, that um, the video player on there, and then you can full screen the chat on your laptop, and then you're you're having that delightful dual screen experience. You are living in the future at that point. Yes, literally the future. <laughs> All right, I'm on top of this building. Now I just need to go over there, which I shall do. Presently. Oh, don't die. No. Um, Try. Saw it. another question from the chat about what are most anticipated from 2013. Oh boy. Um, I'm really looking forward to Jonathan Blow's next game, The Witness, which I yeah. think is supposed to come out this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to. Well, I think Watch he's. Dogs. I think he's in the position of it'll be out when when it's good and ready. Yeah. I don't think Jonathan Blow is in a particular position to feel pressured to put that game out until he feels really good about it. Yeah. 
Um, oh, nuts, nuts, nuts. Get up. Oh. I was, I mean, there's a, a bunch of games that I'm, I'm kind of, you know, keeping an eye on, but nothing has really uh, stolen my heart quite yet. And, uh, and then I found that game when we ran the trailer for it last week, and then it also broke my heart uh, because I am now severely looking forward to uh, CD Projekt Red's take on the uh, Cyberpunk pen and paper RPG. Uh, but then I also saw in that trailer, I, I thought that game was going to be due out this year. No, that game's coming and, out in the that, future. That game is coming out in 2015, which is two years after the original Cyberpunk source book. Boom! Well, not two years after it came out, but two years after the setting for it, because the original source book was Cyberpunk 2013, which is this year. For anybody who's just tuning into our show, man hands, <laughs> man hands. All right, carry on. Let's see. Oh yes, I shall leap here, and then I shall leap here. Call Me Joe 2 asks, did we see The Hobbit? Yes. Yes, I saw The Hobbit. The, ho the Hobbit has been sawn. <laughs> yep, that's... <gasps> you can There's find a, a hidden bag. Where's hidden the hidden bag? bag? I don't know. Is this it? Do I punch open this? Where? That's fine. I don't care about a hidden bag. Aha! I found the hidden bag of garbage. It's right here. <laughs> that's a, a hidden bag. In this garbage pile. Slide through. Uh, I loved The Hobbit. I thought it was great. Um, I think that. I mean, the decision to split that into three different movies is still questionable, considering that The Hobbit is shorter than any of the uh, Lord of the Rings books. Yeah. Um, but I think they did a good job of fleshing it out with the appendices. Um, yeah, the, the the film only felt a little bit ponderously long. Yeah, um, I thought it, I thought it maintained a good pace, and I uh, yeah, I'm I thought I thought it was a fine film. Yeah, um, I I saw the film with a, a bunch of different ideas in mind. I mean, the biggest reason why I wanted to see it is um, I, I wouldn't say that out at, from the beginning I was a believer in the high frame rate version, but I'm definitely curious about it and and wanted to judge that style of filmmaking on its own merits rather than you know prejudging it which I felt like a lot of people were doing um, I came away <laughs> with a couple of different impressions uh, Kaban01 says by the way I work as an engineer and will tell you firsthand don't try to climb into any air ducts it does not work no those things are able to support about what maybe 20 pounds maybe 30 or 40 Definitely not a human weight. Air ducts as a viable method for transportation is probably the greatest lie that video games have ever perpetuated. Yeah. I mean, if you weigh about as much as a cat, go ahead and do that. Um, back to the subject of The Hobbit. The only thing disappointing to me about that movie was the Goblin King's little uh, sidekick in a basket. Yeah. I felt like that was far and away my favorite character in that movie, and he got like seven seconds of screen time. Maybe he should have narrated the movie. I should have, yeah. yeah he should have. Somebody should have. Yeah. Um, yeah, the little goblin in a basket, probably favorite character of the year. I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, also, during the Christmas break, I watched all three extended Lord of the Rings movies in one day. Yeah. The best decision I've ever made. <laughs> uh, I, it has been a, a tradition of mine in the past to watch those over the holiday break, generally like one per, e one per evening in like a three three day stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never tried to marathon them in that that quite quite that fashion. I, I had never done it before, but I was gonna watch one and then my, uh, my fiance basically dared me to watch all three in one day because she had what, to go out and do some Christmas shopping. When, when did you start that, that, uh, when did you start nice I, and early, like I nine started in the morning? It, it was fairly early. I want to say it was like 10 in the morning. Okay. And then I finished, uh, a bit after midnight or maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but all together it was about 
I want to say it's like 14 hours of movie watching. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fun though. Those movies you do not F around. That's what the holiday break is for. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah! I spent far too much of my holiday break playing <laughs> Black Ops 2. Oh yeah? Did you get into multiplayer or something? No! You were just playing the single player. Yeah. Wow. I made. I made. I How much of the single choice. player in that game can you actually play? Five hours? Whoa, yeah! That is not what I was supposed to do. Oh, no. I think it was. I just should have jumped better. This is a top cool question. GameSpot, any sequels you'd like to see for games? Yes, this one. Mirror's Edge 2. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nards. Okay, let's try that again. Air ducts are really dirty and won't hold you up. Um, they're probably full of some kind of septic disease. Yeah. Or poop. Yeah. Or, and Back snipers. to the whole poop conversation we were having earlier. You shouldn't crawl in air ducts because they're likely full of poop. <laughs> poop ducts. Poop ducks, if you will. Not to be confused with poop ducks. I think you need to swing on that bar and then get... No, maybe? Oh. I don't know. Don't listen to me. Thanks for the advice, Tyler. Somehow in my playing through this weekend, this is not a stage I played through. It looks really good, though. This is a really cool looking area. You know what else looks really good? White. Man hands! <laughs> Man hands! Look at that index finger! Look at that! My God, it's like a cucumber with a nail on it. <laughs> A pink cucumber. That's right, I forgot I have to punch the glass. Boom! I feel like Faith at this point is just being a vandal. Ah. Fine, fine. Maybe you should let me take over. Let me, I need to redeem myself. Here. Okay. I'll let you take over after this. I should be able to take this gun, pack some heat. And also, I'll punch those windows out. Punch this TV. Overload, oh, can't even punch that TV. Overlord Rouse Mirror's Edge is a good game and it absolutely deserves a sequel. Shut your mouth. Oh, did you, you get into an argument in the chat there? Um, we have a difference of opinion. That's fair. All right. Let's see if I can do this. I mean, to, to put that in a, a different context, I mean, Portal was a game that didn't need a sequel, but thank God it got oh, one. Fuck. You should do a wall run there. Oh, wall run. Yeah, remember yeah. You, Remember you can wall run? Wall run. I always forget that I can wall run in this game. You should do that before the men with guns. Yeah, come, men with come guns about. are coming. You're also not up high enough. <laughs> That's fun. I like smashing shit in this game. Even though we don't have physics enabled, which is the ultimate way to smash shit, as we all know. Um... Caban01 thinks climb with your air decks was introduced by Half-Life. I'm not sure if that's true. I feel like, I don't know, were there, was there air duct climbing in, uh, uh that's, that feels like the sort of thing you, you do in GoldenEye. Oh yeah, there is, you could. And, and GoldenEye came out before Half-Life 1. The, uh, I, I distinctly remember you started the facility level inside of an air duct and you drop into the bathroom in GoldenEye. Yeah. Where am I going? Where am I going? Well, uh, I think you need to go up. If only these men would not shoot me. I know I need to go up, because that's where it points me when it's the B button. But, I just need to send it a look. Smash! Crunch. Alright. Oh, those dicks are all shooting at me. What a bunch of dicks. Okay. What's over on the other side? Aha! I need to do this thing. Oh, look at that. Blues, head for the roof. Don't forget your public enemy number one face. To those guys, you've got bill tickets all over. Here we go. Ooh, swing jumping. Whoa! Bullets. Gun bullets. Ah, uh, what's up, Duder? That man had a fan. Here's just a regular type room. I think you have found a monster closet. I found a monster closet. 
Oh, I need to get over there somehow. How am I gonna do that? Make, gonna do make that? the climbing movements. But where? Where do I make my climbing movements? Uh, Sigev is yearning for the physics version, of, uh, physics in the, the PC version. He wants to see more waving flags. You can climb that. It's red. <laughs> Um, so again, we were playing uh, the uh, shitty console version, which still looks just fine considering yeah. that this game is over is, four years old. Yeah. Boom. I mean, if we went by strictly years, we'd call this five years old. Uh, but because I neglected to buy it in the Steam sale, um, because I felt like I should be giving more attention to all the other games that I have bought that I haven't played yet, that I still need to play on Steam. You should have asked me. I've got this game on PC. Okay. Also, I died from a helicopter. The helicopters, little known fact, are the number one cause of death in Bailey City. Boom! Oh, you like that? Oh, nuts. Come on, come on, come on out. Hoo -hoo. Oh. Badly for you. Those guys didn't realize they were gonna get kicked in the testicles when they walked through that door. But apparently I didn't do it hard enough. Alright, here we go. Hey guys. See what ya. up? Oh no! What's a monster closet? You can tell because these monsters came out of it. <laughs> Alright, you wanna play? Sure. Oh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll give this to the old go. You've got to invert oh, no. the Y axis. I will save these settings. Right, what do we do? Let's switch spots. Move over here. See you later, hobos. You move. You move to your left. Wait. Move over. Keep moving. Give me some room on this table. Sigin L H asks, "Are you flying a plane by inverting your Y axis?" Yes. Uh, yes. Tyler thinks that he is always flying a plane whenever he plays a first-person shooter. Faith is a, a ground effect plane. That's why she has to stay pretty low to the ground. That's why she's so fast. <laughs> also, little-known fact: Faith's giant man hands essentially function as an airfoil. Yeah. So that's how she's able to generate so much lift. Wingless. Yeah. Oh, that's a rat. Come here, rat. Punch the crap out of you. Do you get an achievement for punching a rat to death? You know, I was looking through the achievements and there is a hidden achievement. Yeah, I bet it's rat punching. Rick's got a hideout up ahead. Head for the cranes and I'll update you when you get closer. Hooah. Watch it, Faith. The Blues have a chopper incoming. F your chopper, Blues. Take that. I'm never gonna make that jump. You ran by that red bike. Don't care. All right, cool. Find me down. This is cool. Hoo-ah! I labored over this, uh... And so, uh, one of the time trials, so I'm like, oh, I know how to get here. So Faith is a messenger, right? Yes. That's her occupation. The, the the story conceit here is that, you know, because this totalitarian utopian city, uh, like all the information is all controlled. Uh huh. Oh, Let's she's say. delivering information. Uh, so the only secure way to transfer, you know. 
contraband information is to use these runners, which are basically just, I don't know, bicycle couriers without the bicycle. Right. Um, which, if you, what is, what was the name of that bicycle courier movie that just came out? Uh, oh, um, something Rush. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Premium Rush, I think, or something like that. Yeah, but that. I would say that that game or that movie owes some of its art design to this, because I, I can't think it's an accident that the protagonist's shirt in that is bright red throughout the entire film, and you know they didn't go as stark as the visuals in this game are. Punch him in the testicles. There you go. Oh, and yeah, one other dude to worry about. What's up? That's the last of them, Faith. Now get going. Okay, now we'll play. So yeah, Premium Rush. I think uh, stole some of the art design from this. Bright red go. shirts. There you go. Red careers. The color red. The color red. You know who else stole from this game? What's that? Matadors. Yeah. Yep. Think about it. Matadors. They use red flags. They had to use or red capes. Green flags, and that just didn't work before this game right. came out. Have anything from the old chat? Cabano one says, "You'd think in the future they would invent better testicle protection." Five signs some of you know might be a runner. Telltale scuff marks on their clothes. Fondness of the color red. Calluses on the palm, knuckle, and fingertips. Ooh. Like man hands. Man hands. Look at those. <laughs> Look at those abnormally <laughs> thick right <laughs> fingers. Man hands. <laughs> Look at the. Why is her right index finger so much thicker? <laughs> All right, I wanna. You guys in the fin in the in the chat, tell me why is Faith's right index finger so much thicker? And don't be gross. Be real. Come up with real reasons why you would have a grotesquely oversized right index finger. But don't be gross. I know what you guys are gonna say, and don't say it. Oops. Darkbeat says it's probably because of the game's field of view, which is, uh, yes, the most accurate description, or the most accurate explanation, I should say. That's the most sensible. Yeah. We don't do sensible here. All right, Pete's 114 wins. That's the hand she uses to push herself through the poop ducts. This is amazing that she can just get that much pushing force from a single yeah. finger. Yeah. But well, that's why that finger's so big. Well, because she doesn't want to dirty up the rest of her hands by touching the poop ducts. So Pete's 114 wins. Yeah. That is a, a rational, that is a rational sense of things. Hello, helicopter. Don't, don't cause my death. I kind of wish that the game was actually about Faith's job as a messenger, so like every level is her trying to deliver a package within yeah. a certain amount of time, rather than her outrunning totalitarian cops. Let's just pretend that that's what the um, the time trials part is about. Yeah, that's you true. just gotta get through these areas before, uh, before the hamburger gets stale. Oh no. Oops, I died. Oops, you died. Are we hearing misgivings about uh, my PhysX in this version of the game again? I'm just saying. PhysX, man. The, the PhysX. I mean, this game has good physics. But it doesn't have. But it doesn't have PhysX. It doesn't have any fizzy X's. Yeah. I want Fizz X. Did Fizz X ever do anything great for anybody? Fizz X? Yeah. It made the, the flags in this game super majestic. 
I mean, look at those flags. Look at them just... Uh, whatever, I'm just an orange flag. They could have been flapping majestically. Like a bald eagle. If a bald eagle was an orange flag. That's what they would have looked like. Let us know in the chat, what's your favorite game to feature Fizz X and why? Also, what's your favorite helicopter in a game? Yeah, let us know first, what is your favorite example of Fizz X in a game? And then let us know, what is your favorite helicopter in a game. Kevin was recently trying to do a thing about his favorite helicopter rail on rail sequence in a game. And I was trying to posit that, uh, well, not to get too much up uh, Dice's nose here, but I was trying to suggest the sequence from Battlefield Bad Company 2, because it had that, uh, what was the name of that guy, the helicopter pilot, the like hippie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that guy. He I forget his name. But he was great. He's a great he, character. He made any intolerable helicopter rail sequence thing yeah. wonderful. And he also spurned or spurred like a ten minute dialogue sequence between those characters about John Lennon glasses. Yeah. Um, so to answer the question about physics, a lot of support for Borderlands 2 because of the elemental weapon effects. And also what War X sna Snake claims is liquid poop physics, which I feel like you're just, you're just having a laugh. That up. You're having a laugh. Um, uh, what else do we have here? <laughs> Call Me Joe 2 says, I can't believe people are still talking about physics. Are you kidding? Because it's Fizz X. It's like regular physics with an X at the end. It's and therefore it's awesome. It's extreme, extremer physics. I'm sure that this is safe, right? Yeah, that looks fine. You have yeah. toe shoes on, so you have extra grip. Yeah, nobody's afraid of heights. I dare you to jump. Either. Jump and try to land on those people. Can you do it? Oh, sky terrorism. Oh, you almost had it. Remember when that? Remember that time in Skate Two where you tried to jump off the top of a building so you could hit your testicles on a handrail? I do. And that <laughs> that gameplay video is still on Gamespot.com. And what was the best part of that video? Discovering what that sound was like. Do you remember oh, that? it was just a really loud clang. It was just it just rang out through eternity. Yeah. Well, there's also at a, at a certain point in time, you're no longer so much hitting your testicles. Uh, on the bar, but destroying your pelvis. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, that was a fun gameplay video. So that's kind of cementing the idea that we should be playing on. Uh, we should definitely do Skate 2. Is that an unloved game? Or is that an overlooked game? I would say it's overlooked. Okay. I guess it means we get to play Skate 2. Yeah. Or should we do Skate 3? I would say Skate 2. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much love for Skate 3. <laughs> Fair enough. Cause, well, I'm just thinking because you have more uh, moves you can do. I just want to do more gun hands. I want to do more gun hands. You know what you can do in Skate 2? What? Gun hands. Gun hands. I wonder if my Skate videos are still on the official it, Skate sharing website. Hey, can you get a message to Miller? I need to see him again. Skate Create. I'm gonna check it out on this computer right now. You keep playing Mirror's Edge. Alrighty. I'm gonna try to find my skate videos. Oh, that just reminded. Oh, that yeah, that just reminded me of the horrible city in Skate, San Vanalona. It's like a three-way portmanteau between San Francisco, Vancouver, and Barcelona. Yeah. Is there a word for a three-way portmanteau? Travis Burfield, Hope's head. Uh, yes, scary. but you, you can't say it on the live stream. Maybe. He sure as hell. Must it be Kevin Vaughn? Is it a portmanage a trois? <laughs> and he wasn't alone. Heard him mention Project Icarus. All right. Burfield is dangerous. I hope my skate videos are still on skate.electronicarts.com. <laughs> they are. 
it's, it's pleasing to see that they've kept those servers active. Yeah. Bird going in the direction of Rope Room. All right, I'm going to. Maybe, but it looked like a CPF one to me. And how no, many this one's good. Can get their paws on a bird in this place. Not many. Hey, you better get going if you want to catch them. And keep on street level two. Blues around. Where should I go? I should go up. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy a link oh, to no, my favorite no. skate video into the chat. I uh, hope it works. It might not work because it's a really long URL. Is all right, all right, chat. Four? I hope you're ready for this. Is it one of the horrible glitch videos where somebody rockets up into the stratosphere? Alright, I hope that link works for you guys. What, what, what video did you just link? Here, I'll show it to you. You ready? <laughs> uh, so in this video, there is a businessman going about his business, uh, which is not a reference to pooping. <laughs> Unlike everything else on this stream. Uh, and then um, a man, a skateboarder, just falls out of the sky. Kind of like, um, kind of like Will Faith just did there. I'm going to post a link to my second favorite skate video. Okay. And what's the uh, what's the other one? Here it is. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I think that guy was using wall hacks. <laughs> he was using wall hacks. All right. Oh, this is the button where I turn off the electrified fencing. Call me Joe Two asks, "Do you do skateboarding as a hobby, Sean?" And I I grew up skateboarding. I don't do too much of it anymore. Um, it's hard to find the time for it, but I used to be pretty into skateboarding. Uh, I, I did as well, although I never got tremendously good at it. I almost did AK flip once. Darkbeat says, I love the janky skate phys -X. That game would be awesome if it had phys -X. It, it would be the best use of phys -X since Mirror's Edge flags. Um... Biggest reason why I stopped skateboarding is because uh, I couldn't, um, I couldn't stop landing on my wrists. And as a person who's going to be making hopefully a long career of using my hands and wrists to do good work, um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't keep doing that to my poor hands. Uh, apparently, what, at least one person in the chat is complaining that the links I posted are making his antivirus program go crazy. Which, that's just how McAfee antivirus works. It reflects the founder of the company, John yeah. McAfee. Eventually it will go crazy. And start murdering and people. And start murdering people and start up a bath salt lab in Belize. So. Is that the other, is that what else he's up to? That's what he was up to before he got arrested. Well. Yeah. John um, McAfee. But if those links aren't working for you, just go to skate.ea.com, click on Skate Create, and then do a search for the username Sean Saves Tokyo, and you should get to my skate videos, if you're at all interested in watching them. They're stupid. But check them out. Why not? Pete's 114 asks, why are you going into massage therapy, Tyler? Um, I missed the part where you went into massage yeah. therapy. I think that's referring to trying to do good work with my hands. Ah. Um, mostly that was a reference to most work I was planning on doing with my life at that point and continue to do involved <clears throat> typing on keyboards. Okay. Um, and, you know, yeah, being able to hold up cameras and things like that. Things that would be trickier if you... Uh, didn't have full and proper use of your hands. Speaking of hands. Speaking of hands, <laughs> mm, sausage fingers. Yeah, I do. The more I think about it, the more I realize that's probably an FOV thing. Yeah. It gets stretched along the edges. But still, I like to imagine that she's just got really 
Just beefy hands. Real beefy hands. Let's see. Well, down isn't the right choice. Oh, I know what I can do. Better than that. Whatever I'm doing, I should do it better than that. You're doing okay here. Oh. Whoops. Was doing alright. I'm gonna try to find that Skate 2 gameplay video. You might be able to find it on GameSpot.com. Yeah. I hope it's still there. Gameplay video. We should have just renamed that video Ouch My Balls. Ah, oh, I found it. What was the, uh, what's the headline on that video? It's Skate 2 Gameplay Movie 6. That's a good headline. Yeah. Very descriptive. What was the deck? The deck is Destruction of Pubis Bone, colon, <laughs> Skate 2. Uh, I'll post a link in the chat. I don't know what, how our Mirror's Edge stream suddenly turned into <laughs> just me posting terrible skate videos, but here we go. Rich and compelling. There you go. That's what you guys want to watch if you want to see me throw myself off a building. Make sure you've got sound on so that you can hear the harsh clang sound. Oh, it occurs at about 18 seconds in. Uh, I missed the magic moment. <laughs> oh, do you want to watch it? Here you go, Tyler. Wait. Here it is. Throwing himself off a building and... <laughs> Ow. Okay. All right, back to Mirror's Edge. Let's stop talking about Skate. I miss Skate. I hope that series isn't dead. That doesn't seem to be... Oh. I'm overthinking the problem. Yeah. Look at these hands. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, hot steam. Watch steam, out. Steam, steam. Man with the iron junk. That's what they call me. So you get a slightly different viewpoint on that. Yeah, that, that hand is still a bit sausage fingery. Wait, so why is the left hand not so sausagey since it's on the end of the screen there? I smell a conspiracy. This game is biased. I feel like I missed a critical thing here to turn that steam off. Maybe that's what's... There's some AC ducting up there. I'm just gonna say, um, EA released a game in which steam kills you, and then a few years later they released a steam competitor. I feel like they've secretly been telegraphing all their major business decisions. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. Chats, give us something good that we can say on this stream. Chat, do you remember how to get over to there? The 
at the moment. I do not. Somebody's asking, can you jump on the lamps on the red wall? No, I don't think you can. <laughs> Whoa. I did something oh. very strange there. You did a weird thing. Nor can I do my sweet wall run jump. Wait, look, so look up, hold B, hold B. Where does B point you? Okay, B points you over there. Yeah, because so I you... gotta go up there and turn off them steam valves. Right. There it is again. Somebody said you gotta keep going along the pipes. Can you go left here on these pipes? Can you dangle? I feel like that's probably not a jump you can make. Especially because it forced me in completely the wrong direction. I feel like it wants me to go this way. Okay, so did you already, you already went through that little small crawl space? Uh, hello. Oh, look at that. No, do your uh, 180 thing. Can you do your 180 thing? No. Okay, good to know. I think you have to drop. Alan Seat asks, Will you guys make a review of Warface? Um, probably. Yeah. We review free-to-play games now, so... Um, ideally we'd be able to review it. Let's let's take a minute to survey our surroundings here. Look up, look up that way. Hmm. I see potential solution. I feel like the pipes have to be part of it because they turn red. Yeah. So try to jump from the pipes to those little light fixtures there. Hmm, interesting. Can you just do a full 180 and, a, and go straight to maybe that? Yeah, can you jump to there from here? I can, but from here I can't. You can't go anywhere else? Yeah, actually, like the controls, the only control I can to keep going up or I can go down. Hmm. Rich and compelling internet content. You want me to give it a shot? Let's see what you got. Okay. I'm gonna try this. Meanwhile, I'm going to Google that shit, yo. Google that shit. Okay, so you said you already came through here? Yeah. That's where if you climb up you will get you will get horribly burned by steam. <laughs> Wait, what? Where, where did you go? I went up here. How did you get up there? I jumped up. God damn it. Well, 
Way to find the solution. <laughs> Way to go. I was trying to find secrets. Look at that. Shit. Speaking of a man with beefy yeah. hands. Yeah. Should never have trusted him. All right. All right. He's with Rokeburn. He just wanted to grief me with the uh, <laughs> changing the controls around. Yeah. Time to turn back into airplane mode. Back in this Icarus stuff. I'm heading up. See what I can find out about Pope and Kate. Oh yeah, this guy. You both go to hell. No one threatens me. Yeah, I'll be okay. Boss fight. I just got Oops, murdered you, by a pipe. He died. And I'm dead. You died. <laughs> he looks like a gorilla in a business suit. That is true. He does look like a gorilla in a business suit. Thank you, Overlord Roz. We can both go to hell. No one threatens me. This is a quick time event with no button props. Look at that. Good thing she's got some beefy hands. Huh. Better talk fast. I can see your hands starting to sweat. Do you think that there's a um a statistic screen in this game that shows you how many testicles you've ruptured? I don't mess with politics. I wish I'd like to think that they're keeping track of that on EA server somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I don't, under the hood. Yeah. I don't think they make that information. Imagine if this game had, like, um, a morality alignment system that changed the story depending on how many testicles you brought through. Yeah. That would be cool. Watch him fade. In retrospect, that was a major oversight on Dice's part, not including that feature. Oh no, he got shot by a gun bullet. Kicking people in the testicles is the renegadist of renegade actions. Right? I was about to crash the party, baby. I feel like I, I get Paragon points every day of my life by not kicking people in the testicles. I feel like I'm pretty much maxed out on my Paragon scale. Now, do you feel like by conscientiously objecting to punching people in the testicles that you're getting those Paragon points? Or I think so. Do you need to, is it like a Paragon action that you're like in a discussion where like the rational choice here is to punch this person in the testicles, but wait, the voice of reason is speaking right now. Darkbeat has a theory that um, in addition to EA's Gun Club website, there's also Testicle Club, which tracks your testicle rupturing statistics across every EA game. Also, Caban01 says, I think one ruptured testicle, it, well, he, I think you accidentally wrote one raptured testicle is enough to make someone evil. And now I'm just imagining a man's single testicle getting raptured up to heaven. Like, why God, why would you do this to me? Why did you rapture that one testicle? But one ruptured testicle is enough to make somebody evil. I don't know, I feel like one is still within the boundaries of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Like, if you just rupture a single testicle, chances are you probably didn't mean to do it. Yeah. But two shows that you have experience and intent. Is this like, um, rupture me once, shame on you, rupture me twice, yeah. shame rupture on you? Rupture one of my testicles, shame on me. Rupture both of my testicles, shame on you. It goes the other way around. Wow, speaking of which. Give me that gun. Oh, or kill me with it. <laughs> uh, DJ Jazzy asks, WTF is this convo? It's a serious conversation. We're talking about life. We're talking about life. Because we decided at the beginning of the stream that Mirror's Edge is a game about life. And it reflects the society we live in. Hey, buddy. 
buddy. Who's next? Oh, come on. Oh, you got killed. I, yeah. Okay. You can do this. I guess I can remember the fact that this is a game where you can shoot people. So I'm gonna... It's also a game where you can fall off and shoot. Oh, that guy's in so much pain. <laughs> Look at him. I don't think you're going to be able to shotgun snipe. I think you shot that man in the testicles based on his reaction. He had it coming. Hey, buddy. Elevator shaft's the fastest way out. Only way out, too. One way or another, you've got to get that elevator moving. Oh. I need to find some sort of elevator control. Call me Joe 2 asks, is there any game you would like to see remade that was done poorly? Tyler? Any game I would like to see remade that wasn't done very well. I'm having trouble thinking of one. Um a few years, you guys were talking about, somebody in the chat mentioned APB earlier in some other conversation. I feel like that would be a fun game if it was executed really well. The sort of oh, the MMO GTA style MMO. game. Yeah. I would be way into that. Yeah. But as it was, it didn't really blow my mind. All right, Tyler, you can do this. I just need to find those elevator controls. Go, go, go. Overlord Draws says, I would like to see the poorly made DMC reboot remade. Oh, now you're just trolling people. That game is great. Yeah, that game's a lot of fun. I mean, I don't think, I don't think original fans of the series are gonna like that game a lot just because if you've stuck with that series, you're probably really good at it. And that game is, is pretty easy by comparison. DMC is? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's still, it's still, has a, a, a decent amount of challenge in there, but I mean, if you've been sticking, like I can play uh, DMC and I cannot play um, the, the later games in that series. Uh, the later games, the original Capcom series. Uh, I'm going to spawn camp these people because I'm a terrible person. Wait for them to come out of the monster closet? Yeah. Oh, they don't come out of there. No. Nope. Don't get killed, Tyler. See, you just shot that man in the testicles. Oh. All right. All right, you can do this. This is gonna be the time. In the meantime, the games I wish could be remade in my vision. Pete's 114 asks, when are you both going to be on the game GameSpot Gameplay podcast next? Uh, That's up to Kevin Van Ord. I'm, you should tweet Kevin Van Ord, whose I might, name is Fiddle Cub. I might be on it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I thought we I thought I couldn't do it because, well, we are going on an assignment later on this week. It's oh, a yeah. secret. A secret assignment. Um, but it turns out we're not leaving until Wednesday, and the podcast recording is on Tuesday. Tweet Kevin. Tell him to have me on the show. Yeah. I don't think he likes having me on the show because I always end up talking about ruptured testicles and poop <laughs> ducks. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And also, I like to uh, give um, Peter Brown a hard time about his, his gaming and his overt love of Salamander. He does love Salamander. 
elevator shaft the fastest way out. Only way out too. One way or another. Call me Joe Two asks, where can I see a calendar of your future streams two weeks in advance? Um. Well, we need to make a, We should calendar. make one of those. Also, we're going to start trying to do more regular shows. Yeah. I mean, I do have a list of games I want to to play in the future and and I should if I was a more organized person. Hey, buddies. Um, I would then like come up with a couple different options so people could be involved and make choices. This is the part where this I'm just going to throw the idea out here. Maybe you don't need to play through this on normal difficulty. Ah, there you go. Playing this game. Anybody who's thinking about playing this game and never has done it before, I would highly recommend putting it on easy difficulty. It makes it a much less frustrating game. It makes the uh, testicle kicking more rewarding. Yeah. Um, we've just been given the 10 minute warning. Really been that long we've been playing this game? Yeah. It just freezes on by. I hope I can. Give me that gun. We're not using it. Shoot that man in the heart. Elevator shaft the fastest way. Oh, I know what to do. Why didn't I see this one? Way or another, yeah. Got you didn't need to wait for those pulling. jerks. Look at that. Okay. Call Me Joe 2 asks Do you guys get to decide what games to air? Yes. Yes. Um, so the game that I was thinking about playing next is, um, well, another game published by EA, um, but from Iowa Interactive, uh, the guys who make the Hitman series, games, Freedom Fighters. Freedom Fighters? I've yeah. never played that one. That, see, that game is, well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that game other than lots of people haven't played that game. Um, Ninetale in the chat The says, only thing I don't know about that game is I don't know if that game will run on an Xbox 360. Okay. Um, I'll have to see. I, I meant to research that this weekend, but uh, instead I played way too much Mirror's Edge. And by way too much Mirror's Edge, I mean not nearly enough. Ninetale in the chat says, I've never shot a gun in this game outside of Chapter 8. Is Chapter 8, remind me, Ninetale, Chap is that the green garage level? No, Chapter 8 is, um, well, I'm assuming that they are referring to the moment where um, you basically, you. it's the one time where you absolutely have to fire a gun. Was oh, that the sniper rifle? Yeah, oh, where okay. you, I mean, the the non-violent choice is that I think you can shoot a person there, but you can also just uh, shoot a, a bullet through the engine. Okay. Is this thing just trolling me now? Yes. Uh. That's where I came from. Um... The whole chat is, has turned into one giant argument about DMC. Oh, look at that! Nice. There we go. That door over there. Signal set. Oh, never mind. Maybe you might be clear of the blues for now. Looks like the riding park. What's the general the feeling on the old? Some kind of renovation. Work. Devil might cry. Uh, well, last I checked, the Metacritic is about 85. So people who reviewed the game really like it, and I think Overlord Draws is uh, standing tall with his claim that that game is a plate of balzagna. Uh, which is a sentiment I'm afraid I don't agree with. I had fun with that game. Yeah, that game's... I, I'm, the controls are a little bit wonky, um, because it, it, it... At least it's not... It, it doesn't play like a lot of stuff I've been playing recently. Um, so I, I had a bit of a, a tough time getting my handle on that. That sounds gross, what I just said. <laughs> Did you get a handle on it with your giant sausage fingers like Faith? I may have. All right. How would Faith get up there? She would use a wingsuit. Um... Not really like a... a because I never really answered the question of, of games I'd like to see remade. And I'm not really sure if it's quite a remake like you're thinking of. Um, I would like a version of Far Cry 3 where the 
the narrative panned out quite as well as, <laughs> as has been planned. Because that game is so fun, yeah. regardless. Oh no. I'm now trapped. And now the gun bullets are going to get my body and die. You got killed by gun bullets. Uh, I did not. Indiana Jones my way underneath the fence. Um, what does the chat think of? Okay, let's 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 do it this way. Uh, Skate two or Freedom Fighters. All That's right. a choice between two fine overlooked EA games. Chat, tell us Skate two or Freedom Fighters. Although, oh no, I've done it again. Oh, there's a button I can press. <laughs> uh, this of course is all dependent on Freedom Fighters running on an Xbox 360. I wonder if there's a PC, I bet there's a PC version of Freedom Fighters. Move the head trying to cut you off. Get ready to fight. I wonder if I, I wonder if you can buy that on the Steam Entertainment Center. Oh ho ho ho! Come here, gun. I like how you end up, you punch the guy with your right and then left and then both hands. Get hit by a train or something. Alan Seat says, League of Legends or Dota 2? Nobody, uh, first of all, I, I don't play League of Legends. I do play Dota 2, but you don't want to see me play Dota 2 because then you're just going to see somebody who's not very good at Dota 2. Um, let's see. Also, those neither of those games are games that are star for attention. Yeah. Um, we will be doing more streams of those games in the future, but not on this show. It's kind of, it seems to be split right now. We've got two for Freedom Fighters, two, three for Skate. Pretty close. Look at that. Sean, which would you rather see? I would rather play Skate. That game's fun. I might play Skate tonight. I'll just talk about it. All the, way out. all the skate talking? Yeah, all the skate talking. Oh, is this the part where we get to play on railroad tracks? Yeah. This is like that part from Half-Life. Only in that part you have a gun. Huh. And a crowbar. Half-Life had a pretty good sewer section where you had to crawl around and poop. Yeah. But there you had a hazard suit. Yeah. You could also... Oof. You could also punch rats. And by punch rats, I mean throw toilets at them. <laughs> not quite sure where I'm going. I'm just going. Yeah, where are you going? Towards the red door. gonna push this button and the emergency door has now been overridden. That emergency door. Oh this emergency door. Where are you coming from, Trey? Blue's getting close. Get moving safe. Signal. Hey, buddies. Booyah. You should rapture his te testicle. Oh. I think he'd instead murder me with a gun butt. Now the conversation has shifted from DMC to the future of the Wii U. Let's take bets. Future in the Wii, future of the Wii U versus future of the Vita. Well, I guess I would probably say between those two, the, the Wii U, because Nintendo has a lot more riding on that. Yeah. Which 
Sony could Sony could suffer the failure of the game. Okay, we are we are getting the wrap it up signal. All right. Um, I guess that means I need to stop playing this game. <laughs> that makes me sad. All right, Tyler, when is your next episode of the B list going to be on Twitch Television? That will be next Monday. Okay. The um, well, if you have a calendar, then then you can figure out what the date is because I don't. All right. Uh, but next Monday. Let's wait. What's the date today? The 14th. 14th. That'll, That'll be, be the, the 21st. There, that's basic math. Math. All right. Um, and, uh, well, it seemed pretty split in the decision between whether we're going to play Freedom Fighters or Skate the Second. So, um, it'll be a big old surprise. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, playing this game for you guys. And hope to see you back here real soon. And play this game. It's great. 20 bucks on Steam. Probably cheaper on Xbox. Bye. Bye.